Hello world! So I'm currently working on a project using Plotly Dash and I'm needing to basically do a VLOOKUP using Python and then joining the data from two separate sources into one pandas data frame. If you haven't seen any of my other Plotly Dash videos, um, you can check out the whole playlist by clicking here. So we're going to join the data from this right here, this Excel right so it's the census population for um, 2020 for Louisiana and I've already downloaded it in my downloads folder and it looks like this so these are the geographic areas um, in Louisiana we call them parishes but they're the counties all right and then what we're going to do is we're going to join that using this list of FIPS codes and FIPS is what I need for the plotly dash so as you can see, it's all 50 states. And so we just need Louisiana here. So basically, we're going to do a VLOOKUP on this right here, Acadia, attach the FIPS, and that way we can um, join the 2010 census data, 2020 census, the percent change in population, and then have the FIPS code. So basically, if you're familiar with Excel, it's just a VLOOKUP. So let's check out how to do that now. But first, welcome to the 169th video on my channel, where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Um, having local economic data is one of the top things I want for an artificial assistant, uh, artificial intelligence digital assistant, if you will. And so I would love to have a Plotly Dash interactive dashboard for all the economic data that I need to run my small business that will be opening up soon. And so that's what I've been doing here. So please subscribe to my channel if you want to see me build my own digital assistant. Um, leave a like and then comment if you're from Louisiana and tell me what parish you're from. So we're going to use pandas, of course. We're going to import pandas as PD. Um, we're going to use beautiful soup and requests to get the data from this table right here. Now, full disclosure, I had to go onto Stack Overflow to figure out how to get that, but I'll show you that. Um, so first, we're going to set the options for pandas, and this is the width to 400 pixels or characters, I believe, and the max columns to 10, and that's because when we join it, we're going to have more columns than PyCharm normally shows. So the first data frame that we create is easy. It's this data frame right here. So what you do is you just say, I'm going to call it DF1, so data frame 1 equals PD for pandas dot read Excel and then this file right here, Louisiana 2020 Census Parish. So it's not in my root folder, so I have to give the full path so it's in my downloads folder and then we're going to skip the first row which is this one right here and then these will be our column names so that's what skip rows equals one and now let's print that data frame just to see what it looks like alright so let me move my face a little bit so we have the geographic area. It still has Louisiana, but that's fine because we're going to VLOOK up it so the rows don't have to match. In fact, we can scramble this if we wanted to and it would still work properly. Then um, this has the April 1st, 2010 census data, the April 1st, 2020 census data, and then the percent change in population as a float instead of a percentage. So that's the first data frame that we have. Pretty simple on that one. So let's comment out that print statement. Now we're going to work on the second data frame. Um, so let me comment this back in. So what we're going to do is use a normal request in beautiful uh, soup to scrape this data. So first you pass the URL, which is up here. All right, you pass it to this URL as a string. Then we just want the HTML text. So HTML text equals requests, 
which we imported up here, dot get, you pass it the URL, and then dot text, because we just want the text. Then we're going to say soup equals capital beautiful soup, which is what we imported up here from BS4 equals import beautiful soup. Um, also, you have to pip install pandas and BS4 as well, if you haven't already done that. Um, so beautiful soup, we're going to pass it this HTML text and we're going to say HTML.parser and that way beautiful soup knows to read all the HTML. Then we're going to do an empty dictionary or an empty list. So data equals an empty list. Now what we're going to do, and this is how I had to go to Stack Overflow for, is this. Um, and if you're nervous about going to Stack Overflow, you kind of should be. And I made a video on how to uh, post a question to Stack Overflow without getting destroyed. And you can watch that by clicking here. So basically what you need to do for any beautiful soup or scraping, um, you need to inspect it. So what we have here is this Henry. So right, we have these table HTML tags. So this is the table row. This is the table data. And all of this is its own individual entry, right? So um, there we go. And now we're into the one table. So that's all these TRs and TD. And so what this uh, Stack Overflow user did was for the TR, and this could be any variable, but for the table row in soup.find, the table, right? There's only one table. The class equals data. We're going to find all table rows. And then each row equals the TD, right? The table data dot text for each TD in TR, which is up here, dot find all equals TD. So this is kind of a nested for loop. And if the length of that row equals three, so anytime it finds this right here, so this row equals three elements, because there's a lot of other TDs and TRs here. Um, just whomever made the website put everything into a table, um, right? That's up to them. But if it equals three, right, three of these, three of these, these rows, then we're going to drop down here. So it's only going to find this data right here. I'm sorry. This data here, anything with these three columns. Then I said the state equals row, which is up here. And the state is the second index or the third item. So indexes are, starts with zero, zero, one, two. So the state is the second item or second index item or third item. The county or parish, I should actually change this to parish, equals row. Um, now this is the second item or the first index. And then I said if the state which is up here, equals LA for Louisiana, because this has all the 50 states and I don't need all that. So if it has LA um, right here, so when it finds this first LA, it's going to get us into this if loop, or into this if right here. And then I could have just data.append each row. So, um, and that's going to put it into here, right? An empty list. But when I ran this the first time, I realized that this right here, this Excel sheet, and this website aren't the same. So I had to um, create two if statements, uh, if um, conditions to capture these two items. The first one is this parish right here is called LaSalle. But notice how there's a space on the website. And on this one, LaSalle has no space. So. We just captured that. If the county, now we're on the website, right? So if there's a space, if county equals equals LaSalle with a space, then we're just going to change it to LaSalle, just like the web, uh, this uh, Excel sheet. The second thing was the saints, St. Bernard, St. Charles, St. Helena, St. James, St. John the Baptist. On this Excel, the saint has a dot. Okay, and so if I did a VLOOKUP, just like Excel, it would not find it. So I use some string methods. So if the county dot starts with ST, 
and you don't have to do equals equals true because that's what this is right now this this statement is true but if you just put the the colon on here then it says if the county dot starts with st is true that's the same way then this county which we've already defined up here equals county dot replace and we're going to replace the st from the website right with i'm sorry st with a dot and then that row one is now this county that has the replace and then we append everything so if it's not these two right not these two if statements it's just going to append this to a row in a list that we call data if it's LaSalle it'll correct it if it starts with Saint with no dot it'll correct that and now we have all of our data dot append in this right here so next what we're going to do is create our second data frame so DF2 equals PD dot data frame right we're creating our own data frame this one we don't have that because we're just reading directly off Excel so dot data frame we're going to pass it this empty this list sorry this completed list and we're going to define the columns so I changed one of the columns because um, if you're familiar with VLOOKUP the columns have to match or the columns should match to make it easier so this says FIPS name and state but I'm going to make my own columns FIPS geographic area and state because that matches here the geographic area okay so we can print that now um, did I comment out data frame one yep so let's uh, print that out see what that looks like df2 All right so now we have the FIPS the geographic area because we define that as a column and then the state okay so let's clear that so that's our second data frame and now we're going to join them so this comes from this pandas methods are coming from um, SQL languages so I'm not going to go the difference between inner outer left and right but I chose an inner join so I'm just going to call it inner join inner, inner underscore join equals PD dot merge data frame one data frame two this on equals so what we're doing is this is the VLOOKUP basically on geographic area so it's going to look in both data frames for geographic area and then how we're going to do an inner you can change that to outer left right I think there's another one too um, and then that's it and now we're going to join it and print it All right. So now we have a list, or I'm sorry, a data frame that has the geographic area, the 2010 census, 2020, the percent change in population, right? So this was all found in the Excel. And now we have a FIPS data, right? This is all the FIPS. And then these are all Louisiana parishes. The number matches, there are 63, just like in both, because we caught the LaSalle and the Saint see how these are changed to match the Excel and that is how you do a VLOOKUP in Python using pandas and then putting it merging it into a data frame so I hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe so you can see how I use this data with plotly dash as you can imagine I'm just gonna plot it on a map of Louisiana and so, um, but also subscribe to my channel if you're interested in robotics and AI and Python programming and like this video and thanks for watching. Goodbye world.